All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, again, my name is Jarvis Salser, and I'm the director of education for STEM Board. Um, and STEM Board is the company that um, Aisha Bo is the co-founder and CEO of. And um, today I'm going to be speaking about strengthening education um, um, for innovation. Before I get started, um, I actually want to uh, share a, a personal story, my own kind of journey, because I have a special place um, in my heart for the Bahamas. And when you see my, uh, my slide, you, you, you'll know why. When I share my story, you'll know why. Why Bahamas, even though I'm from Louisiana, from the South, um, but I have a special place in my heart for, for the Bahamas. And so I want to get to that. Um, but before I do, it, it, this uh, quote here by, by, by Albert Einstein is um, consistent with what Chris was talking about. The world we have created, if you can put, you no, know, Bahamas we have created, is a product of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. And part of what we do as part of STEM board in our, in our camp is to change, begin to change the thinking of the youth um, through what we do um, through our camp. So I'll speak about that you know, in a moment. Next slide. I don't have the clicker, so. Oh, perfect. All right. So how many know this gentleman that's in the center of, of this slide? So um, for those who, who don't know, Dr. Miles Monroe, prominent minister um, in the Bahamas, um, and unfortunately his family, his wife, um, and others, you know, um, part of his ministry, um, died in a plane crash. Actually, uh, ye yesterday made, a, made three years, actually. And so for me, Dr. Miles Monroe tremendously impacted my life. As a, high school, as a college student, I was considering dropping out of, out of college. And he came to my church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Had never heard of him, didn't know who he was. But my father and I just came back from, 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 um, from school, and he um, was speaking. And as they say, he sort of changed my thinking. Um, I was studying at Southern University, physics, undergrad in physics, I have a mind in mathematics. And I was considering dropping out and quote unquote, going into full-time ministry, so to speak, so, so I thought. And I heard Miles Monroe speak about potential, about you know, recognizing your, your, your leadership and, and purpose. And I couldn't see how, what I really wanted to do in life in terms of impacting young people's lives. I couldn't see I could do that really through physics. And I was like, why, why am I doing this in the first place? I kind of lost my passion for why I was pursuing a degree in physics, you know. Um, and when I heard him speak, it just really changed my life, really. I mean, Miles, outside of my parents um, and other members of my family who encouraged me and the grace of God, I, I, I decided not only at that, that, that night, it was a Friday night, I never forget, it was a Friday night, that night I decided I'm not only going to get my undergrad, I'm not going to stay in school and get my undergrad in physics and my mind in mathematics, but I'm also going to go to, to graduate school. He said one thing in his speech you know, at my church, he said, you can be a scientist, he literally says that you can be a computer scientist working in a lab or running your own company and can impact many more people than I can through you pursuing what your God-given ability, be it in science, engineering, whatever it may be. I had never heard a minister talk about that. And from that, I got all these books, I've read all these books, and thankfully, you know, um, many years ago, I had a chance to visit, visit him here in, you know, in, in NASA, and uh, got all my books. Um, I tried to have them with me, so I bought them again at his bookstore and had him sign them all and share my story with him about how he changed my life in terms of the impact he had on me and why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So the opportunity... <laughs> and so the opportunity to now be part of a company that is actually inspiring young people in the Bahamas is like a dream come true for me. It's a way of me giving back to someone who had a tremendous impact on my life. And from that, you know, I, I've, I've worked in Silicon Valley. I was in Silicon Valley for about 17 years. Um, and I worked at Hewlett Packard. I was, wireless, I was in wireless communications. I worked at Agilent Technologies. I started my own um, educational company, which is where I made that pivot. I went from being in hardcore tech, working in engineering, working in a research group, on new, new product design, 
to a passion I always had, which actually started from, again, from Miles Monroe, telling me how you can have an impact on the lives of young people. And I started Excel Educational Services, which is a, a math and science educational company that started with one child. That's why I do not despise small beginnings. I started Excel Educational Services with one student, one young lady in pre-algebra at that dinner table in Hayward, California. And that company went from having, from one student, myself tutoring, to hiring a group of tutors, to getting contracts with the government, to having, you know, hiring a CEO, being able to transition out of that company and to do other things. So regardless of where you may be in your journey on this, on this, on this journey of innovation and entrepreneurship, do not despise small beginnings. Even as, you know, the Bahamas looks to become a tech hub, do not despise small beginnings. I couldn't have seen that coming when I was able to grow that company and transition out of it and, and do some other things. So, um, and it also led to me even starting a real estate company, which we see them nice, beautiful homes. I'm back from the Bahamas. I wish I had one here, but I don't. But, um, but I also started a real estate company. So my journey and what I do now is in large part, again, to the impact that Miles has had on my life. And so I thought it was important for me to share um, my PhD um, from Cornell University is in nuclear science and engineering. Um, and when I finished my, my PhD, and um, I'm not, most people say I look really young, but I'm a little bit older um, than I may look, but I finished my PhD in 1998, actually. I was 20-something years old, and I um, was the only African-American male in the United States that year to get a PhD in nuclear science and engineering. So... And I always get the same response, a lot of hand claps. But in reality, that's kind of sad <laughs> to be the only one, right? Because, you know, I'm, I, I'm only one person. And I'm thinking that could be good and bad because maybe it's not a field that everyone want to go into. There's no jobs or whatever. Who knows? But in any case, um, I do what I do now because I want to inspire more people, more students, not to do what I've done necessarily, but whatever their passion, whatever their dream may be, be it in engineering, be it in science, be it in business, be it in marketing, whatever it may be, that to realize your full potential. So with that, um, I'll go to the next slide and I'll transition to what STEM board is about. So STEM board is two parts. So I actually started the company with the, with, with the vision of not only doing, you know, creating smart systems for the U.S. Department of Defense, you know, and software solutions uh, for pro large private sector clients, but also she wanted to bake in the, at the very beginning this idea of giving back. So before I joined STEM board, you know, back in 2015, she had already been running, had already been doing Hackett, Bahamas, and NASA already. So we're now, we just finished our fourth year of doing this camp, and now we want to bring it to Freeport. That's, our, that's how we want to bring this to Freeport. And we were speaking with um, um, Senator Thompson about what, how we can make that a reality. Um, and so the educational part is what I run. I run our educational vision. Um, and our goal, as you see here, is really to inspire students now to be consumers of technology because we all consume the technology. We want them to be the creators of it. You know, students here from Freeport, from NASA, to be creators of technology because that's where the opportunity really lies. Because when you're a creator of the technology, you can create jobs. You can change people's lives in a different way. Not saying you, you have to be a, a, a business owner necessarily, but we're on the other end of not only using an app, but building the app, or building the next Facebook, or building the next Google, why, not, why, why can't that come from someone from Freeport? But why not? Why not? I, I, mean, I mean, Silicon Valley doesn't have a monopoly on the best ideas, the most innovative and disruptive ideas. They don't have a monopoly on it. No, no, no parts of the country or the world have a monopoly on the best ideas. And what I've seen in working with students for the last three years um, here in, in NASA, actually in NASA at, at, at St. Andrews, where we host our camp, students come with some amazing ideas. Um, and with that, I'm going to show a, a, a video that actually is uh, sponsored by Alive, because they were one of our primary sponsors this past year. So the video you're going to see is a, um, uh, give you a snapshot, about two, two, two and a half minute video of our Hack in Bahamas 2017 that we did in NASA. And like I said, we want to bring this to Freeport. Thank you. 
No one to summer like we do It's just the way of life, life Packet Bahamas focuses on innovation. We bring together private and public school students from all over the Bahamas, and we challenge them to do one thing, build a technology that in some way can improve an aspect of Bahamian life. Well, what I like about this program is, hey, no idea is a dumb idea. So you can say pretty much anything, and have like facts behind it, and it can make it very big. It's a chance to meet new people, and you can also expand your knowledge of certain things, like engineering and I've done things that I've never thought I'd been able to do before and it's just amazing. I um, believe that young people would be effective because it helps bring out your inventor and things you didn't know that are inside of you. It was a great event. I want to come. I want it to last forever. Alive being the sponsor of a technology week is, is phenomenal because we're a technology company. We're a cutting edge technology company. Um, you know, since we launched November 23rd, all we've been trying to do is innovate. So just like how these young persons are innovating in the technologies that they did this week, we're innovating with our plans, with our solutions, with our products. Uh, we're trying to innovate with our services, and as you know, we continue to grow. So Alive is very deep in the technology. Um, we do other events, but I think we're trying to get as much technology to the young persons as possible. I think it's very important for people to support Hackett because Hackett is a way for our generation to embrace their ideas. This program is the largest free program in the country and it is allowing the Bahamas to become a leader in the region in STEM. Okay, what we invented was, it's sort, it's sort of like a, a little box you can, you can hook up to your car and, it can, and you can be able to control anything inside your car with, with your app. Well, it was very hard to begin with. It all started off with code and different um, mechanics we had to use just to demonstrate it, but the idea itself was pretty easy to create. It's like a dream. I didn't even think uh, we could win this. Yeah. 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 Um, it's great. I, I'm speechless. So these young people come in on a Monday, excited. Most of them have no prior experience. And by the end of that week, they've created a prototype. And then as part of a Shark Tank style pitch competition, they pitch their ideas to a group of judges. Um, and the winning, the top three teams get a cash prize. And that's just in one week. This is just one week. It's not like we have, you know, three or four weeks for these students. These students will come in, and I say investment, they're high school students uh, from all over the um, the bottom. It's 50% female, 50% male students in the program. Um, and when they come in the first day, we ask them, think of problems that you see in your community that you want to address. Things that's, that, you know, oftentimes entrepreneurs scratch their own itch. Something that irks them. You know, or they, or they see problems in their community that they want to address that really is like, why, why, why this is a problem? Okay, great. We do this whole ideation where they go through this, all these problems, and things are great. You identify the problems. Now, if you want to be a mechanical engineer, you want to be an electrical engineer, computer scientist, or you want to be an aerospace engineer, how can you come up with a solution? We put them in groups of three, about three to five students in a team, and they come up with a solution to that problem that they've, that they've agreed upon that we want to, they, they, they want to address. And then over the course of that week, they work with professional engineers who, who are the actual instructors, and they work through learning basic engineering concepts with the idea of building a prototype, some type of prototype by the end, before the end of that week. And they use the business model canvas um, as a framework to think about their solution as a value proposition. And so we walk them through this whole entrepreneurial kind of, kind of process of, Great, you got this, but we got to think about the other aspects of what it takes to build, you know, a company from just this, this solution to this particular problem. Right? And, so, and, and so you just got a chance to see what some of these students are able to create. Um, here they'll listen to some of the, some of the um, names of the teams and projects they've worked on. One that I will, I will highlight is Electrolyte. So it was mentioned earlier about blackouts, right? And so a couple of years ago, we were living at the, we were standing at the Atlantis, and one of our instructors actually got stuck in the elevator as we were getting ready to leave, leave the hotel to go to the camp. 
I mean, it was kind of, it wasn't funny at the time, but it's funny now, but she got stuck. And so we were late getting there because it was a blackout. Just so happened, one of the students in the, in, in, in the camp, one of the teens, said, what if we created an app that, you know, in partnership with the local utility company that could notify the residents of when they're going to be a blackout? And we charged maybe a dollar to download that app so you can know in advance. So if you, if you have someone who is elderly or whatever or sick and, 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 electric, and electric, the electricity goes out or you just bought some food and you got meat, you put it in the refrigerator, it goes out for who knows how long and it spoils and now you've lost the money too. So what if you just get, what if a way to notify the residents with a simple app of how that this is about to happen so you can plan ahead. Now this is, these are high school students. They want to charge a dollar for that. You got thousands of people they can pay for their college. Just that simple. High school students. That's just one example. You know, another example, I, I, I don't have it up here, but, but it comes to my mind where one um, student, they live in an area where there was a lot of, um, a lot of pollution from the, from, from, the, from the trash being burned. And there was a high, high concentration of, of cancer in that region. So what if we had a drone that had sensors on it that you can detect the carcinogens in the air and get a sense of whether or not it really is coming from um, the, the pollutants that are in the air. And then again, these are high school students who come in thinking about problems in their own community that they feel like if given opportunity, they can solve some of these problems working with the government, working with local industry partners to address some of these issues. So I don't think, you know, as I would say, we shouldn't sleep on the, the, the potential and the ideas and creativity that, that is latent and dormant in our youth. And so, uh, too quick, so here. Um, so I, what is our vision? Um, and and I, we strongly believe at STEM board, Aisha and I and the rest of the team, that to really go the next level, it's going to be a joint effort. It's going to be local businesses. It's going to be the government. It's going to be us working to really take what these students are, can do in one week to the next level. And what that looks like, we want to see students not only come up with a great idea that they, that they, that they you know, started in the course of the week, we want to incubate that idea. You know, we want to surround them with, when we leave, we want to, we want to keep the, 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 mo the motivation, the momentum they've created over the course of that week here. We want to get local people who you know, I already, already recruited Krista for next year that she's going to be one of our instructors. You know, I want to get some local, you know, and, and Zerks, we're trying to get, get you guys on board to, to, to actually have people locally and other engineers locally that can work with these students beyond just the one week camp we have. Um, and then accelerate those ideas, put them in a position where they can get funding. Oh, they need a lot of help. They're young. They don't have all the technical expertise. But what if they partner with, you know, some local engineers, the industries that, that, that had, you know, that align with what they, what they were working on? And then you put them in a position through an incubator, then we can launch their companies. And you don't have to be a, a college graduate. You don't have to have a PhD. You can start it from right where they are, working in partnership with the local government and the local, low local companies to see this go to the next level. That, in our mind, is the next level of this. Because we're just, we, what we do is just a catalyst. We just get them excited. They get exposed to, we kind of change their mindset of what they, what they may be able to do. But that's not enough. And we know that. To really have systemic change, you want to see true companies, some companies come out of what this leads, what, what we start here. <laughs> All right. Um, the next thing here is we, so in 2015, 2016, we did a solar grant challenge um, sponsored by DHL, working with the local um, program manager um, um, in, in NASA um, and in Cayman. And in Bermuda, we did a solar grant challenge. It was a real issue that DHL came to us through a connection we had with, with um, one of their um, managers that they rent, they lease buildings, and they wanted to create a mobile solar solution for the building they lease in NASA. And they wanted to you know, make this an international competition with engineering professionals. You know, um, I actually not convinced them why not, give our, why not give the high school students opportunity to work on a low-level prototype that could address this? And so me and my team, we managed a solar grand challenge with Cayman students from Cayman Islands, Bermuda, and the Bahamas. 
in 2015, in 2016, where they worked with a, a subject matter expert and came with a prototypes, and the top three teams had an opportunity to come to, sponsored by DHL, to come to the Bahamas and participate in, a week, in our week-long hacking camp to refine their concept and idea, and they pitched their idea at the end, and the students won. I think the top three students, it was a total of $10,000 in, in, in prize money that the students won. Well, we want to expand that. We want to make that even something we can continue to, 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 to do more of. Um, and so that's just an example of students being able to be innovative and come up with, with ideas. And most of them, again, had no prior experience. You know, he started in January of 2016, worked with the teams at their local high schools. And we, we, we identified some mentors locally, partnered them up with those mentors. They worked with them over the course of that six months or so. Uh, we didn't. We didn't write an abstract. They had, they had to, you know, kind of map out what they were going to do. And then we, with a rubric, we decided which students had the best ideas, and we invited those students to come to, like I said, to um, NASA to pitch the idea. And so, those are the ways that STEM board, you know, and Aisha Bo and I and the rest of our team are really trying to strengthen educate through innovation. Because we educate through innovation, we think that is at the core um, of how you're going to see. Tremendous change long term. It's starting with the generation, the younger, the younger generation. I don't think that's it. I think you think it's across the full spectrum. But we've chosen to focus on young people who have tremendous amount of potential. Because I see a lot of myself in them when I was their age. But I didn't, I didn't have a, the fortune of being able to participate in these kind of camps when I was that age. Um, um, but being able to be in a position now to help them and inspire them, I think, has been a tremendous um, blessing for me, but also, I think, for the students and for the parents um, that are also involved in what we're doing. So how can you get involved? Sponsorship, cash or in-kind, serve an entrepreneurship mentor. As we work with these students over the course of the week, we want to be able to keep them engaged, as I've said before. Um, you can volunteer this past summer and even the previous several years. We've had... Um, University of the Bahamas students who are engineering majors, actually serve as volunteers, help us in the classroom with our engineers that they're working with. So we really try to engage the local community and we're working with the high school, the local um, college students here um, that, that are participating as mentors to the students. So they see some, some students who are, who are not too far removed from where they are and also came from some of the same high schools that they came from that are also working with us um, as part of what we do for Hack in Bahamas and also as instructors. Um, right now, I would structure the majority of them, but for all of them right now, come from the U.S., from Intel, from, you know, we, we've had some from, um, from Google. I believe we had a, a, one instructor from Google at one point, um, myself, um, one from the U.S. State Department. Um, and these are all people who are professionals in the, you know, who are professional engineers in electrical engineering, computer science, aerospace. Um, and so those are the ways in which you can get involved in what we're doing. And we believe that the best way for us to see this be something that's more systemic is to have it here, to have it here, have, have locals train, kind of train the trainer model. Where we come in, we can train those who are local so that we can continue this beyond just what we can do. Because we are limited. We get about 150 plus or even more applicants for only about 75 slots. If we have the resource, we'll, we don't want to turn any, any student away. But we just don't have, the, we don't have the capacity. But just imagine we train others to do hackers. Not only during the summer, but maybe, you, maybe when they went to breaks, you can do, you can do hackers. You can make it an academic year programming. There's a hot, lot more we can do to impact even more students in the community um, across Bahamas. So with that, um, I want to acknowledge our sponsor. Live has been a tremendous uh, um, support, um, along with others, um, as you see here, that, that have been, um, over the years, supportive of our um, Hacking Bahamas um, um, camp. So with that, thank you for your um, time and um, wish you much success. <laughs>